KP's video news, y'all. It's KP's video news, y'all. It's KP's video news, y'all. It's KP's video news, y'all. That's right. KP's video news, y'all. Yep. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, it's, I don't know. I guess I feel the same way just about every day, man, when I start doing a little doing my research to uh try to get my stories together that i need to bring to you on a daily basis on uh sometimes two a day sometimes one a week you know whenever i do it and this particular rule and this particular law that i ran across and it's the uh state of california lawmakers they're they're trying to make a move to ban solitary confinement for long stints so basically for long periods of time and uh california lawmakers sent governor uh gavin newsom a bill tuesday to limit solitary confinement in jails prisons and private detention centers and ban its use altogether for vulnerable populations such as pregnant and elderly people. The fate of the legislation, Assembly Bill 2632, had remained uncertain through this year's legislative session due to strong opposition from law enforcement groups and concerns from California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation about the bill's price tag. <laughs> uh, the state corrections agency estimated that the restrictions on solitary confinement could add more than $1 billion in one-time cost to expand its programming space and exercise yards and $200 million annually to maintain the staff necessary to comply with the new regulations. And they just trying, that's just, they, they just lying. They're lying. They don't need all that. Civil rights and criminal justice reform advocates say those numbers were inflated and that the restrictions are necessary to protect human rights and to prevent abusive treatment of people in custody. The international community has made it very clear that solitary confinement is torture uh, and there, there needs to be some limitations and some constraints on how it's used and when it's used said Assemblyman Chris Holden, the Pasadena Democrat who wrote the bill. We've seen way too many instances of how solitary confinement has been used to not just correct behavior or isolate for some specific period of time, but really to break people or to break their spirit or to break their will. The legislation defines solitary or segregated confinement as holding a person in a cell or similar space uh, with severe restrictions on physical activity and movement and minimum z uh, or zero contact with people other than correction staff for more than 17 hours a day. The bill also covers instances when someone is confined with the cellmate but is cut off from other contact and services for most of the day. The bill restricts such confinement to no more than 15 consecutive days and a total of 45 days in a six month span. Those isolated I individuals would be granted some time out of their cells to access services, treatment, recreation, and meals, unless there's a significant risk to safety. Solitary confinement would be prohibited for people 25 and younger or 60 and older. Those with certain physical and mental disabilities and those who are pregnant or in postpartum recovery. Staff would have to follow strict protocol when placing someone in a solitary confinement, including documenting why the person was being segregated and conducting consistent monitoring and frequent mental health check-ins. The Office of Inspector General and California Board of State and Community Corrections would have to assess the corrections facilities each year for compliance and produce an annual public report. So, so we think the restrictions on certain types of placements are, are going 
are going to make facilities less. Uh, this is you know these people, man. The sheriffs, the sheriff, uh, state sheriffs association. You know they're talking about it's going to be less safe for them. However, you know when it comes down to it, you know you have a job to do. You have a job to do. Yeah. Yeah, I tell you, boy, these people, man, are something else. So if you have a revolving door, uh, okay, you get a couple of weeks, and then you get to go back out and do it all over again. Where's the incentive to not engage in that type of behavior? So this is another one. You know, these people, they, you know, they just don't want to change, man. They just want to just lock you up, throw you in a cage, and a lawsuit filed in 2018 similarly alleged that incarcerated people in Sacramento County jails were subjected to harsh, prolonged, and undue isolation where they were deprived of human contact programming, fresh air, and sunlight for weeks or months at a time. And uh, so there have been people, man, that, you know, I don't know how true it is. You know, they've been talking about they did solitary confinement for years for years in prison not just months or days years so that would have to drive you completely crazy man to be separated from uh everybody separated and not have any kind of human contact for long periods of times man that's just inhumane totally inhumane uh so all those people that say well they're going to jail it's not supposed to be this it's not supposed to be that I tell you what, you are worse than the person that's uh, that's actually locked up if you feel that way. If you feel that those people should be suffering 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, then you're just as, as a, uh, inhumane as the criminal himself. So uh, anyway, two-thirds of black Americans uh, on this is the next story say that recent increased focus on race and racial inequality in the United States has not led to changes that are improving the lives of black people. And finding marks uh, a pessimistic turn, September 2020, the majority of black adults, 56%, felt the added attention to issues of race and equality following the summer protests sparked by the uh, George Floyd would lead to changes that improve the lives of black people. In a new survey, however, 65% percent of black adults say that such changes haven't materialized. Just 13 percent see it as extremely or, or very likely that black people in the United States will achieve equality with little variation in that figure by age, gender, region, or educational level. The survey, which included interviews with more than 3,000 black Americans nationwide conducted last fall, finds 82 percent consider racism a major problem for black people in the United States, and about eight in 10 black Americans report having personally experienced discrimination because of their race or ethnicity, 79%, uh, including 15% to say they experience uh, such discrimination regularly. And roughly seven out of 10, 68%, say racial discrimination is the main reason why black people can't get ahead these days. Overall, black Americans are clear on what they think the problems are uh, facing the country and how to remedy them. However, they are skeptical that a meaningful changes will take place in their lifetime. And a broad majority, 85% of black adults say black people in the United States today are significantly affected by the legacy of slavery and 77% say descendants of people of enslaved in the United States should be re repaid with uh, reparations and just 7% of adults see the payment of reparations as a very extremely likely in their lifetime. Among the overall U.S. population, just 30%. Wow. So racism ranks as, uh, as the most pressing problem for black people living in the United States out of six issues tested on the survey. Almost two-thirds of black adults, 63% say it's an extremely big problem uh, for black Americans, while 60% of the same say police brutality, 54% of economic inequality, 
47% affordability of health care, 46% efforts to limit voting, and 40% of the quality of, of schools K through 12. So it's uh, some crazy situations, man. Crazy situations. So this is a Pew Research Center survey, a sample of 3,912 black Americans online from October 4th to the 17th of uh, 2021. And so, you know, it's uh, got a plus or minus of 2%, two percentage points. Either way, man, either way. Okay, here we go. We have a, uh, a young homeless black youth that has uh, been accepted. So a California teen who says he spent most of his high school years unhoused beat the odds and begins his first semester of college at Fisk University, a historically black college where he was recently recruited to play basketball and pursue higher education. So I'm not surprised Jeremiah is where he's at today. Armstead's mother, Mindy, uh, Mindy Brooks stated, I'm not surprised because he's always been a good person. And Jeremiah Armstead, 19, spent the past three years sleeping in cars and domestic violence shelters with his mother, brother, and sister. He was staying at a friend's house uh, the morning he found out about his university acceptance. His mother called and said, Jay, you have just got accepted in the Fisk, and I'm checking my email. Uh, his acceptance letter from the HBCU already included his student ID welcoming him to the class of 2026, a moment he said made him feel uh, any type of adversity uh, that I went through for the most part that motivated me and pushed me. So that's like four years from now. And Offstead said the road to Fisk won't be easy, but his family, coaches, and leaders from the organizations like We Educate Brilliant Minds and Sisters of Watts supported him as he juggled housing insecurity and staying on track for graduation. I was uh, bringing smarts, of, of course, but it's hard to do that, being homeless and juggling everything, like domestic violence situations, stuff like that. He said, living in a shelter, living in a car, and it was hard to think. Go to school, worry about his mother, brothers, and sister. And Armstead didn't tell his classmates about his challenges he faced outside of the classroom. His mother, Minnie Brooks said his friends would often wonder why he would ask to be dropped off at 7-Eleven, unaware of his circumstances. This fall, Armstead joins the Fisk basketball team under the guidance of coach and former LA uh, Clippers basketball player, Kenneth Anderson. And this definitely will be a blessing for him and his family to be at a university, Fisk University Anderson uh, told ABC News, he said he could tell from Armstead's demeanor and work ethic that he would be great fit for the team. So he's uh, now easing into his freshman year, beginning his studies in uh, his studies. And so, okay, they had the wrong t date on there. So he's starting, he's starting school already. Congratulations, congratulations on that. And so this is a, you know, exact opposite Oh, the story that I just just uh, told you about. Here we go. They have uh, while investigating an alleged assault in Battle Creek laundromat, police said they arrested a man who had meth laced pills that looked like children's vitamins. It's very important here. So Battle Creek police identified a vehicle in question from the alleged assault at Finish Line Laundry. And when they pulled the vehicle over, they found an 18-year-old with what appeared to be colorful pills or vitamins. And the Battle Creek police said it's it, uh, lab tested the pills, finding them to be methamphetamine. They took the teen into custody and he is charged with assault battery and possession of controlled substances. Wow. That's crazy, man. That is crazy. So they got these uh, these uh, fentanyl, well, not fentanyl, but methamphetamine pills that you know look like look like kids' vitamins, look like you know some you know gummy bears or something like that. Wow, 
crazy, man. Watch your kids. Watch your kids. Talk to your kids. Talk to your kids and grandkids. And make sure you educate them on these things. Don't accept nothing from no other kids out there talking about, take here, you want to take one of these? No. And get your vitamins at home. That's what you do. You get your vitamins at home. Don't be taking nothing else. Another kid from school is trying to give you some kind of crazy looking pills. Anyway, you know who it is. You know who it is. KP's video news, y'all. KP's Peace. video news.